worked in Connecticut, I worked with a young boy that had auditory defensiveness, the way he couldn't go into a building that had a microphone. He couldn't go to church because he was afraid of the microphone or any restaurant where they announced, um, you know, the orders were ready. So it really was paralyzing for the family. They couldn't take him anywhere. And so we used a lot of desensitization. We started off with, you know, the microphone's in the room, but it's in a box and it's unplugged and it's over there. And then gradually, you know, we brought it in into the area, but it was still unplugged and it was, so it was a gradual, gradual, gradual. And all this time we're writing songs with him and we're talking about life experiences and we're bringing in a, a toy microphone and it doesn't have any feedback. And then we're putting it on the stand, but we're not plugging in it. This took six months, you know, mm -hmm. to, to build this, this, um, this, ex this acceptance, this deliberate reduction of the resistance that he had towards these fears. These were scary things for him. I mean, we're, we're, um, emotional beings first we're, we're we're not logical in the sense that you know we have we all have that fight flight fright response in us but we're able to filter out and, and kind of assess things a little bit a little bit better than some of these kids so so something like a fire alarm we've heard it enough times that we know this is not life-threatening this is just a sound and, and and this this kid would fall apart we fall apart so working with him and desensitizing by the end of a six month period he was singing into that microphone and, and hitting drums and working I mean it took little tiny baby steps to kind of retrain him that this is okay this is okay let's um, we did the same with haircuts terrified of getting a haircut the mother would have to cut his hair in his sleep he, she just couldn't get him anywhere near so we wrote a little song about getting your hair cut and we started it in the therapy room with him just in a chair and me just using you know and we talked about when it's time to get your hair cut so we wrote this little song about getting your hair cut and we played and we played and it was part of the song so he knew what was coming we played and then we gradually you know started working with little toy scissors and we would just kind of take little snips and say and we built it to the point where we could and we brought Barbara into the classroom and we started to work on so so now he knew what was coming he knew the progression of steps that I'm going to sit in the chair and then we're going to do this and we worked with the barber so the barber knew you know we need to do it in this order <laughs> since and faded into where he can you know now go get a haircut he can sit in the big barber chair and he knows the songs he knows the components of the song and he kind of runs them through his head so he knows that there's mm. an expectation so we took something that simple you know that that we don't think about to a kid that was just absolutely terrified and used the music to provide structure so that he took the you know the predictability was built into it and he was able to do something that he never would have been able to do this is kind of a you know a generic um task analysis of how are we going to get from where we are to where we'd like to be. How are we going to get this kid to be able to go out with his family? And well, how are we going to work on that as a work with behavioralists and work with, with um, you, know, you know, the speech therapists do a phenomenal job of doing social stories and saying, here's what's going to happen, here's what's going to happen. And so they can read it and they can comfort themselves and say, I'm going to do this and then this is going to happen and then this is going to happen. But life's unpredictable. Noises show up. <laughs> you, know, you don't always yeah. know when something's coming. So, you know, the music is... It's unpredictable and predictable at the same time. You know, we don't always know when the, the drum is going to come in. And we, and, but there's a, the more and more we're exposed to that, the more we're, you know, we, we accept more. And if the kids that I work with, they become more flexible. They become more acceptant of, you know, the, the drum might come in at this point or there might be a, a cymbal crash and, and the tolerance increases each time as we build and, and help them re-regulate and get more focused on, you know, what's going to happen and make that part of the, part of the, experience the music experience of like oh what's gonna happen and it, and it becomes okay